What is the best camera for stock photography? Hmm, that's a tough one to answer, but I get this question all the time, so I'm going to give you my answer. This is Nicole Glass, and if you're new here, consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any new videos related to stock photography and photography in general. All right, so before I get into the actual camera question, let me mention this. Personally, I would not go out and buy expensive camera gear if your only purpose for that gear is stock photography. But if you're trying to get into photography in general and you're going to use that gear for other types of photo work, then by all means, get yourself some gear. But here's the thing with stock photography. Many people do well with it, but there's also many people who get into it, who create an account, and then they lose motivation to continue and they give up. In fact, based on what I've personally seen, the majority give up. Some of you might have noticed that I have a referral link to Shutterstock in my description. Over the course of about a year since I added the link to one of my descriptions, I have made about, drum roll please, $20 from referrals. And I have referred more than 500 people. Shutterstock pays me four cents for every download that one of my referrals receives, which is literally pennies. I mean, literally four cents. So obviously I don't have this referral link there to make any sort of income because I mean, it's, that would be a waste of my time. But I do keep it there because it does allow me to see whether or not people are finding success on the platform and it gives me a little bit of data that I can analyze. Now it's my guess that this $20 I made in referrals primarily came from one person, which is actually my coworker who signed up for Shutterstock using my referral link. My coworker is the only person that has used my link that has actually uploaded more than a thousand photos. Out of those 500 people that used my link to sign up, less than 10 of them actually uploaded more than a hundred photos. And everybody else pretty much uploaded between zero to 10 photos total. I mean, there's a couple who have a few more like 12 or 15, but the vast majority have either zero photos or under 10 photos. So just by looking at my referrals, I can see that over 90% of the people who signed up, uploaded a handful of photos or no photos, and then gave up. So why am I bringing this up? Well, if these people had gone out and bought expensive photography gear simply for stock photography purposes and nothing else, they would have not made back the money they spent on that gear and they would have been really disappointed. So if stock photography is the only type of photography that you're interested in doing, Here's what I would recommend. Use your phone or whatever camera that you have on you already, even if it's a point or shoot, and take the best quality photos that you possibly can. Upload lots of these photos to stock photography platforms and see if you're getting good results. And more importantly, see if you enjoy it, see if you have a passion for it and if you can imagine yourself doing this consistently for a long time. If after a while you found that you've made some good earnings through stock photography or simply that you just absolutely love doing it, then consider upgrading your equipment if you feel like you need to. So what is the best camera for stock photography? Obviously the answer is whatever camera that you have on you, but that's not what you wanna hear. There are so many cameras out there that it's impossible for me to be able to know about and compare all of them. I am personally most familiar with Canon because I am a Canon user and always have been, so I can tell you a little bit about which Canon cameras I would recommend that you start with if that's what you're looking to buy. But I know there's probably also Nikon, Sony, and Panasonic equivalents that are also really awesome. So I shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV, but this is an expensive camera, so I don't recommend that if you're just starting out. Instead, I would recommend something more affordable. Any of the cameras in the Canon Rebel series are fantastic if you're just starting out. My first camera was a Canon Rebel T2i, and I did great things with that before I upgraded. Right now, they're up to the Canon Rebel T7i, but even if you get a T6i or a T6, it will be a wonderful camera for your purposes. A lot of my friends have actually also been buying the Canon M50, which is a mirrorless camera, and it's also very small. I've heard such great things about it, and if you're interested in this camera, I would actually recommend that you check out the YouTube channel of Zdenka, Darula, who has posted a series of great videos
videos about this camera specifically. She makes me want one too. Of course, the camera is just one part of the tech, but the lens is probably more important. If you're just starting out and you've chosen to go with Canon, a lens that you might want to consider getting is the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens. It is really affordable and fantastic in low light. You can use this lens for beautiful portraits, night photography, and really anything. This was my first lens that I bought aside from the kit lenses that came with my first camera. I'll link to all of these items in the description below, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. But again, a camera is just a tool. What's going to define your success is your own creativity, hard work, patience, and persistence. Don't be one of those photographers who uploads 10 photos to a stock photography platforms and says, this doesn't work, and then gives up. Now, if you're planning to just use your phone camera to upload photos and videos to Shutterstock, that's totally fine. Many people actually do that, especially considering how amazing phone cameras have gotten in the past couple of years. And I mean, when you think about it, a lot of times a phone will cost more than an actual camera now. But just keep in mind that you are competing with beautiful professional photography on all of the stock photography platforms. You can be successful with a phone as long as you keep a few things in the back of your mind. Check out this video I made, which is all about tips and tricks to improve your phone photography on Shutterstock so you can actually see some earnings. Which camera do you use for stock photography and how has it done for you? Let me know. I'm curious what gear you all use. Subscribe if you're new here and I will see you in the next video.